Hey, Chris, it's good to be with you today. So, uh, you know, you and I have spent a lot of time working uh, around the, the agile precepts as, uh, through our careers. And so I thought we'd start off today with just you telling us, uh, telling the listeners a little bit more about, you know, what is working agilely and, and even as importantly, what is it not? Yeah, so Agile is really interesting. It was, a, it was a real sea change in how we consumed information and how we thought about applications because rather than get applications that would take, you know, the kind of big bang applications, we would take, you know, multiple months or multiple years to develop and produce. With the web, you could deploy things instantly. And so people became very accustomed to that idea of, I go to the site or I have this functionality and I want to do something else and a couple weeks later it appears. And what we learned in that environment is that our, our more traditional ways of doing software development didn't really fit, didn't really work for that. People were consuming information more rapidly. They were, they were looking for features and functionality more rapidly. So Agile came out of that, came out of this notion that we needed to move faster and we needed to move more iteratively. That um, in contrast to that big bang approach, we needed to iteratively go through and, and introduce features. So that's a big part of Agile. But the other big part of Agile, and it, it part, the reason that it's, it's really important to me to you know, running the kinds of teams that we have a group on, is it really enforces the idea that you have small focused teams that are able to make local decisions about the applications they're developing. So Agile is all about pushing authority down, giving people a framework, but saying, you know, if you need to determine the color, the colors on the on the screen, you know, the colors of buttons, that you have to, you can work within design guides, but you know, if that's a, you know, the choices within that are entirely up to the team. And more importantly, because Agile says you should be talking to your customers all the time, not just when you're ready to test or not just when you're ready to put something into the market, you're getting that live feedback, and your customers can tell you if they like that or they don't like that. And so I think that kind of that um, that devolution of authority and you know putting putting the tools and the decision making in the hands of the people that are closest to problems is another really valuable part of agile. What it's not, um, there are definitely still projects that that don't fit the agile mindset. Agile is all about you know having a sketch and and you know building something, test you know trying it out with your customer and then revising it, revising it till you get it right. There are some things that we still do in IT that don't fit that. Like if we were going to stand up a brand new data center, that would be really hard to do in an iterative approach. Uh, if we were going to do some sort of uh, you know massive overhaul of our cloud infrastructure, that too would be more difficult to do in that approach. But you know, by and large, for software development, for customers internal or externally, uh, Agile works really great, and it is very very widely adopted across. Excellent. So, uh, you know, today's topic, we're really talking about, about our list, our viewers here are, are thinking about reskilling and into the future, right? So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. We'd love to hear your thoughts on, on what, what are those things, uh, those skills and competencies should folks that are reskilling uh, focus their energies on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you know, I'll start with kind of an overall, and then there's some specific roles that you could focus on with agile development. So, Overall, if you are going to do anything in IT, you should acquaint yourself with the Agile practices and the philosophy behind Agile. Uh, after this, uh, we are going to uh, post some links um, that are just short overviews of Agile um, and kind of a, a brief how-to guide with some video links about what Agile looks like in practice. So, you know, step one would be in, in reskilling, just really familiarize yourself with the practices of Agile. Don't get too hung up in um, uh, the super details. Just understand the you know the concepts behind it and why it's different from other forms of development. Going deeper from that, there are particular roles in agile development that are very highly in demand that you could focus on. So one of those roles is the role of Scrum Master. You can think of the Scrum Master as the the conductor the, the of the orchestra, the person who is making sure that um, it, the team is uh, working on the right features in the right order, uh, that they are getting customer feedback, that they are uh, checking in with the team on you know things that are complete or things that things that are still open. So they kind of coordinate all the activity. 
it's a um, it's in some ways akin to what project managers do, but it is a it is a somewhat different skill set and it is highly in demand. The other is the role of product manager, and so you can think about in in a development. You know, I'll go back to my website example. So if we're developing a web application, and we're going to have people that are working on the code, people who are working on how that web application looks, how the database works, but we're also going to have people who represent the customer's interest in that. So if our fictional web application is a banking application, the product manager is the person who is the conduit between the people who are going to use that banking application and the development team saying, this is what they want. This is, you know, these are the kinds of this is the information they want to look up. These are the kinds of reports they'd like to see. These are the kinds of activities they'd like to do and help with the design and the requirements gathering. And, and importantly, product management is not writing long documents. Being an integral part of the team, sitting you know, side by side with the engineers and helping them develop the software every day. Hey, um, actually, we've got a, our first question that's just come in. It says, um, Riley would like to know, you know, as a, as a leader, what questions should they be asking themselves to determine if their team should tackle a project in an agile way or perhaps a more, a more structured way? Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, part of it is what are your customers expecting? If they're internal customers or external customers, are they looking for faster um, delivery of certain features? Uh, of functionality? That's one question. If they are, Agile works really well for that. Are they saying to you directly or indirectly that they don't feel like what you're delivering is exactly what they want? Agile can be really good for that because Agile forces you to have that customer, that ongoing customer conversation. Um, is your company saying to you that we're not moving fast enough? And for a long time, not moving fast enough is a is a perception often, but it, it, what underlies that perception a lot of times is we feel like, you know, we, we go long periods of time between delivering something to our customers. And um, the other is, do you feel like decision-making is slowing you down? That decision-making is bottlenecked somewhere about what to develop, when to develop it, what order to develop it. And if that's the case, if you feel like that's an anchor on the company uh, or the team, then Agile is a good way to resolve that. Um, if you have something that is, um, if you don't have those things or you have something that really requires, um, you know, huge coordination, I use data centers as an example. There's definitely things in like the healthcare space with like um, big, uh, big low tolerance uh, for error medical equipment, like surgical equipment. That, gen that generally do follow still more of a structured workflow because you know, the, the room for error is, is a lot less there. Sure. Okay. That's a good advice. I, um, we really got the questions rolling in here. So there's, cool. uh, there's several in here about agile certifications. And, and I know that as people think about reskilling, are there certifications uh, that, that you would suggest are more useful than others? Or um, what about just certifications in general for uh, agile? Yeah, I, I think education is really important. I think it is, you need to go into it uh, looking for the program that is going to give you the right overview and the right education versus the, you know, the, the credential at the end. Um, I, I don't have any specific ones that I'd recommend. There's, there's lots of organizations that offer uh, Agile certificates and Agile training. Um, I think what you want to look at is, is look at the quality of the program, talk to people that have been it uh, either you know at your own company or through your through your network and see what they thought about it. But I, I think the the education in Agile is really working on a team uh, and doing your first Agile projects. But there's really no substitute for you know sitting um, with somebody who's been an Agile practitioner, um, learning learning the techniques, uh, learning the ceremonies, and getting some real world advice about it, what works and what doesn't. Very good. Um, another here, uh, we've got a question here, just, you know, a recent graduate looking for how do I, how do I get experience doing Agile, right? Are there some avenues 
as I'm looking for employment or exploring opportunities, right? Are there some avenues I can follow to perhaps uh, have some experience? Outside of, you know, in terms of just like watching things, there are a lot of great videos on YouTube that you can watch and talk about agile concepts and actually pick apart a project that was done in an agile way and, and look at that. You know, beyond that, I would say is if you're a recent grad, you know, look for opportunities to do short term engagements. If those are internships or consulting opportunities, because almost anywhere you go now, you'll go, you'll be placed on a project that is using agile practices and you'll, you'll get a chance to, to do it that way. Um, you can also, there are development communities online. If you're, you know, if you've done some development work and if you go on GitHub, there are, there are communities in GitHub that do co-development of different uh, different things, whether it's open source technology or just fun projects people are playing around with. And I know a lot of those communities work in an agile way as well. 